Anyway, the fifth point that I co-wrote a paper that uh, the methodology was highly criticized, right? So what is this paper that I wrote that the methodology is widely criticized? It is actually a paper that I published. In 2003, I published two papers. But the main target of the paper is this Sun and Baluna's 2003 paper, okay? Was examining this famous story. Anybody of you heard of hockey stick temperature history? Yeah, okay. But for the internet audience, this is a very well-known paper, and uh, we will explain in detail what it is. And this is a very, very important paper in the sense that it was so highlighted and heavily promoted in the third assessment, which was published in 2001. And this is what the graph is, okay? You have essentially the history say that from 1000 to 1980, the, the temperature change is very flat. Remember the scale. The change is so small that actually not detectable really. It's very small, like a handle of a stick, and then the sharp rise, which is the blade. Okay? And then even the arrow bar, so-called arrow bar that we call the sheath, is actually not an arrow bar at all. So you've got to be careful with what these guys are putting out. It's very dangerous. So this is why it's called a hockey stick, right? It has that shape. But the question is that I'm not worried about anything. But the question is, is this correct temperature record? Obviously, it's not. That's why I published this paper. So what is so heretical about my paper? What did I do? I just published a paper expressing my understanding of this subject. So this is what I did. I studied about 200 or more papers. Obviously, that's a lot of papers. I studied them very carefully. That you, you know that for the last thousand years, we don't have thermometer data, we have only 150 years, right? So you have to rely on something called a climate proxy, right? A temperature or rainfall kind of record, right? But you based on basically a natural archive, like tree rings, ice core, you know, sea sediment, ocean sediment, so on and so forth. So in this work, I study all these works and I ask three questions. First, do you have the, the, the data record shows any medieval warm period from 800 to 1300 AD. As you can see from this record, the answer is mostly yes. It's read all over the place. Okay? And this is why I cannot agree with the IPCC narrative or Michael Mann's uh, narrative. It's clearly everywhere. Michael Mann is very good at building another narrative. He said, oh, you know, this middle warm period only exists in Europe and Greenland. The Viking story are too well known for them to deny, so they have to play out this game. But look, China, you look even in America, that's when they built Angkor Wat, all kinds of historical hist facts. The period were warm and it was there. And they say, no, it didn't exist. That's what they're saying. I can't agree with that. So I published a paper, I didn't want to fight him. Oh, excuse me, you know, I don't want to do nothing to fight with you. And then I asked a second question on this map. Is there a period called the Little Ice Age where the ice mass go to some decent size? That's why it's called Little Ice Age. The last ice age was actually 21,000 years ago, right? Now we're talking about 1300 to 1900, right? 14 to, to, to uh, 18th century, right? And indeed, the answer is all over is yes. It's red. And then the problem I think that they bother the most is about the question on 20th century. Because the idea of this hockey stick is to try to say that this is unprecedented and unusual. So therefore, it must be man-made, must be CO2, right? But I also couldn't answer the question in a definitive way that the answer is that, is this 20th century is unusual or anything? Most of the answer is actually no, okay? So that's the bottom line of this study. Guess what happened in this study? If you compare with Michael Mann's original paper in 1999, was produced, I put it here, and you ask yourself, what did he do? He considered only nine sites and I consider over 100 to 200 sites. So how do you compare this? Not only that, when we ask him a question, why do you put Tasmania there? Oh, you say you don't know mathematics. That's how they reply. Until today, this whole issue is not settled. This guy is just keep talking that way. So, <laughs> if you have a take home point today, you have to remember, Willison is the guy that will have two wiki page entries. I got two, thank you. <laughs> This is now because the paper is so famous, it's called Sun and Baluna's controversy. So we're going to address three of these points here. The first one is that the paper was strongly criticized. Always got criticized. Thank you. Thank you for criticizing, please. Let's have a look. Well, it was criticized. Man, Professor Man et al., with a bunch of colleagues, almost eight or nine of them, published a, a, a commentary on my paper. Okay? And then we replied with Professor Legate helping us. That's a very normal process. But what is not unusual is actually the behind the scene. Okay, the hanky-panky signs that they're doing. 
Okay? <laughs> Professor Michael Mann actually is conspiring. They were doing this. They were getting the, the, the comment to be fast processed so that it can produce, can print it in July 8 of 2003 so that it can be ready for the July 29 uh, Senate EPW testimony hearing that myself, Dave Legates, and Michael Mann is attending so that they can dismiss us, saying that we're so bad. And the people that are involved in that emails is actually very, very big guy from IPCC, the former chairman, Rajendra Pachauri, and then, of course, the White House OSTP. Okay? And guess what? Our comment got printed. It did not print it. But it's printed on November 4th. That's four months after the hearing. Okay? So no one would be able to look at my, my reply for four months. Okay? That's how bad it is. It's completely set up. I'm not impressed with this, this kind of move, but that's the truth. So you can see, by the way, the slide will be made available. You can read in details these are all these different folks, NOAA and all these uh, OSCP people, trying to say that, you know, you must urgently take down this paper so that we can do, dismiss this paper. This is the kind of work they are doing behind the scenes, isn't it, right? And then here involved the editor of the EOS, the journal where they publish in, which is Professor Asla, uh, uh, Alan Mosley Thompson from Ohio State University. They were really, really working amongst themselves to make sure that, that they do this kind of unusual thing. If you want to comment on my paper, you should publish it on the journal that I publish in. No, 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 they go to another journal so that they can have the last word. Because after we publish a comment, they have a last word. This is how it's completely staged. These people, they're not in interested in, in science. So the second point is actually that prompting concern. So <laughs> after this paper, my, my, my work is so bad that all the journal editor resigned. Okay? And here's the story. The email shows that actually some 48 editors, they, the, the publisher of the journal, actually looked through the peer review process, you know, looking behind all the paperwork, and say that basically the editor has the handled the, the paper, they've done a good job, and then the reviewer did a good job, and the author themselves answered properly. And by that time, even the new editor in chief by the name of Professor Hans von Storch, he already resigned along the way, right? But remember, none of them want to ask me, and no one asked me a single question during all this process, or asking for my approval to look at all this exchange that I, you know, that is supposed to be holy. You're not supposed to do that in peer review sciences. Anyway, here's a here's a third one, right? All this guy resigned. Here's a third twilight zone. The third twilight zone is this. This is actually a paper led by Professor Han von Storch. Do you remember, he said my paper is so bad that he wants to resign. <laughs> but in 2004, he actually published a paper criticized the hockey stick data for being wrong, for not enough changes in the handle. It should have much larger changes, which is exactly what I say. And he said that <laughs> this is the kind of twilight zone. I mean, this is how science is becoming so bad. Or maybe I'm just too good looking for him that he's jealous of me. I don't know. I should do my Elvis uh, rendition of Joe House Rock more often. But anyway, update to 2022, a paper that just published last month by Sebastian Luning and his colleagues, who actually gave a very good overview summary today. Yeah, you have places that you can show some hockey stick for now, but most of them show medieval warm period and zero ice age, as example by this curve. You notice that there's one curve by men, which is still showing this and still have a little stick. Hey, really soon you're off the thing. Remember, there are all kinds of tricks. The way that you can get this is that what Michael Mann did is this. He take the proxy record, which cannot show this uprise. He stitch, okay? It's called a man trick. They stitch the thermometer record that make it look like this. In the end, I'll show you what the thermo thermometer record is in another part of it. 